Well, hello everyone and welcome back to another RIS Media Broker Webinar Series. I'm so excited to bring this one to you. This is a great one. We're talking about how to attract and keep agent teams. Uh, today's sponsor is, uh, this whole webinar is being brought to you by Residential Real Estate Council. And we have an amazing panel. Uh, I'm Sherry Johnson, CEO and founder of Sherry Johnson Coaching. And I'm excited to be the moderator of today's panel. Just so we can, while people are getting on right now, uh, go into the questions section of the GoToMeeting panel that you see. And let me know where you're logging in from, what city, what state you're in, and say hello to us over there in the question section. And I see some people already going in there now. Thank you. Wanted to also just say any housekeeping items, if you are having a problem hearing or the sound or anything like that, just go ahead and um, our producers will answer those questions for you as well. And we are recording this amazing panel today. So you'll be able to uh, watch the playback and share it with your friends, as well as uh, receive some of the giveaways that are that are going to be at the end. So you'll want to stick around. Uh, the playback will be emailed out to everyone uh, either this afternoon or by tomorrow. So you'll be able to, again, watch that and uh, and get all of the great content you're about to get right now. So I'm excited. We have a, an amazing uh, group of top team experts that have uh, managed teams, They've started and led their own teams. Um, I'm really, really excited to jump right in and start introducing them. And uh, just before that, let's uh, just in case you have not, uh, there we go. Oops, we are missing. Isn't that interesting? We're missing Jeff's picture. I'm so sorry. I don't know what happened there. <laughs> um, so I'm going to introduce our panelists. Here, we'll do this. Um, there we go. There we go. There it is. Awesome. So we've got uh, this lineup today. And again, these folks have uh, started teams, led their own teams, they manage teams from a broker perspective, and they're going to share today some really great, amazing content. We've got some uh, audio, Peter, that I can hear in the background if somebody could mute. Peter, Kristen. Do you guys hear that or is it gone? Yeah, it might be one of the fellow panelists. If if you're not on, you might try muting, but aside from that, uh, okay. it should be good. I hear, yeah, that's gone now. Thank you. Not gone. Um, so I've got, um, again, we've got uh, our sponsor today, uh, Real Estate, Residential Real Estate Council. Alex, uh, you're with us today. Alex, um, I'm gonna introduce you in a moment. If you have not heard of RAS Media, please check out the daily e-news. RAS Media is the number one source and most trusted content uh, in the real estate industry, featuring uh, literally daily content multiple times a day to help you be a better broker, manager, agent, and uh, all kinds of great information. So go to RASmedia.com, subscribe to the daily e-news, uh, and again, you'll they have all these webinars and all this content available for you. I've already introduced myself. Again, I'm Sherry Johnson, and I have Sherry Johnson Coaching and Consulting. We uh, provide solutions for agents, brokers, teams, and uh, keynote speaking and all kinds of great uh, coaching available. Sasha Tripp is joining us uh, from Virginia. Hi, Sasha. Hi, guys. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Would you uh, do me a quick favor and tell everybody uh, where you are from in Virginia and sort of your role and uh, the types of teams you've been involved with and, and sort of the size and scope of your current team? Yeah, so I have uh, I wear an interesting hat. Um, I'm in Charlottesville, Virginia, so we're a little bit south of Washington, D.C., uh, home of University of Virginia for anybody that's a sports fan of smaller sports. Um, we uh, currently I own and operate my own brokerage, but it is just a team that I have walked away from another large brokerage with. So I have the perspective of um, being the vice president of a large brokerage in town, um, building my team under that brokerage, building it, building it, building it. Teams were kind of a new um, entity here in Charlottesville back when I was doing this closer to like seven to 10 years ago. 
Um, and I worked endlessly with that brokerage who I loved to pieces and I parted ultimately on very great terms with, but we worked endlessly to try to figure out how to make teams work and how to recruit them and how to sort of bend our protocol for them. Um, and ultimately, it worked extremely well. There came a point in time, um, Virginia got a little difficult on their rules around teams and around dual agency within teams that made it a lot easier for me to be my own company. But that is probably the primary reason that I finally did walk away from that brokerage was just our licensing laws and some conflict of interest that was starting to pop up. Uh, but I worked really, really hard on um, keeping teams recruited and keeping them happy and comfortable and finding a way to mesh the team needs with the brokerage needs and have had a lot of success with that. Now I'm running my own brokerage. We are not recruiting other teams, but I can kind of show you what to do to avoid losing these top producers. And sometimes it will be inevitable. You know, there's just no way around it. But there, I think a lot of times there are ways to work through it and have a really good win-win situation for everyone. Awesome. And just to give um, the audience, your team is about how many people and what kind of production? So right now, uh, my team slash company, I, we don't even, we don't call ourselves a team anymore, but it's hard to get out of that mentality. Uh, we are 14 people large. It's myself and five other full-time sales agents. The rest is staff. And we will do about 125 uh, million in revenue this year or in volume this year. Um, and that, you know, we don't have amazing sales prices, but we have decent, very strong sales prices. So we'll have to sell uh, anywhere, oh, we'll have to sell 250 plus houses to get there. So we don't do tons of million dollar homes. But uh, that at a certain point, that's when we, we kind of became a little too big to fit in with this other brokerage um, construct. Well, and congratulations, because that's amazing. And that's uh, really no small feat. That's a lot of units. It's a lot of uh, sales volume for really a, a, everyone's producing at high numbers. So Congrats and thanks for being here. You're going to add a lot of value. I know it from our conversations. Um, yeah, so thank you. And next, Jeff Robertson with Fathom Realty out of Dallas, Texas. Hi, Jeff. Welcome. Hi, thanks for having me. Oh, thank you for being here. Um, please just share a little bit about you've got um, a, a pretty large job and uh, you deal with this topic on a daily basis. So tell us a little bit about your role at Fathom. Yeah, like Sasha, I wear a few different hats. Um, so I am a team leader. Uh, uh, personally, I've got two two agents under me. So it's a much, much smaller team than, than Sasha's. But um, I also work as the district director for Collin County, which is north of Dallas, about 30 to 45 minutes north of Dallas. Um, have about 600 agents um, under me. Um, that recently changed as as that got to be a little too many. So we hired, hired a few more district directors. But um, within my group, we probably have um, probably about 20 teams, um, I would say 10 quite large teams where they're doing um, anywhere from 80 million to 150 million of, um, of uh, gross revenue and uh, you know, most of those teams have five plus members and they average from about 80 transactions to our top team um, is on pace to do about 240 transactions this year. Fantastic. And um, this, that's a lot. I know I, I can I, I can feel it. I manage 750 students. I totally know the capacity that that takes. Um, so great to have you. And I know you've got some real great um, advice and value to add to our panel today. And Alex Milstein from actually president of talking about two different hats, president of the real estate, um, residential real estate council, and also team leader of your really great big team in Ann Arbor, Michigan with Caldwell Baker. So Alex, good to see you. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me, Sherry. Um, it's really exciting to be here um, on behalf of the residential real estate council. Um, we have a great program called Broker Solutions that assist uh, independent brokers throughout the country, um, not only in uh, helping them grow their businesses, but also with consulting services, um, as well as education, providing customized education for your agents, for your brokers, um, and more uh, importantly, offering resources. So I'm excited to be here to talk a little about Broker Solutions and how it can help brokers. Uh, but a little bit about me, um, I'm based out of Ann Arbor, Michigan, which is home to the University of Michigan. Um, and I run a team of 12 people. 
Um, this year, we'll probably do about 120 million in production um, and about 300, uh, maybe a little bit over 300 units. Um, my previous role, although that was many years ago, is I was a branch manager where um, I had the opportunity to uh, manage some teams. Um, so um, I have quite a bit of experience uh, from both sides being the manager of, t of teams and then being a manager within a team. Um, so I'm excited to share my experience. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. And it's um, all of you are really uh, equipped to have different perspectives uh, that will help in the conversation today. So again, if you have questions out in the audience, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to put them into the questions section in the go to uh, meeting bar in the panel there, and we will make sure that we get them uh, answered for you. So the very first question, speaking of questions, um, that we're going to ask is, in your prospective companies, so um, what types of teams, you know, the, the, really the conundrum out there is that there are so many different team models, there are different uh, approaches to supporting those teams, and we know that there are mega teams, groups, uh, partner teams, domestic teams, they're just, it's a huge topic that has been sort of, um, you know, now brokers are finally uh, getting comfortable with the topic and providing solutions. If you could just tell me about the types of teams, I'll start with you, Jeff, because you mentioned you've got about 20 teams that you particularly oversee and look at. Um, what kinds of teams are they? Are, do you see one model over another? And what, what can you share with us on the different types of, of teams that you oversee and look and, and lead? Yeah, so it's it's really interesting because over seven years of being a district director, I've, I've seen so many different models of, of teams. And I, and I would say, you know, the majority of them are the traditional model where, um, you know, it's paid for leads and the team lead generates leads uh, through, you know, purchasing leads or through a, you know, lead generation system and then filters those out to agents. Um, but we have a pretty wide mix. We've got one team that uh, really focuses on new home builds they develop relationships with uh, new home build, build sales reps and get in front of them and um, you know they've got all types of partnerships and that's my team that is going on on track to do about 240 units this year um, i've got another team that is fantastic at door knocking i know that scares some agents but he's got this app and they each have territories and they go after uh, a lot of rural and kind of lakefront properties um it's kind of more about volume for them they they don't have a fantastic uh average you know sell um it, it's definitely lower but they're kind of more on the volume side and and they're uh, probably going to hit around 150 transactions this year um but they you know they door knock and they've got a whole system he tracks them and they have to hit so many um so many houses every single day uh and then i've got you know just the more traditional models i've got um, a very good partner team that are not partner their spouse team and uh, between the two of them they're going to hit about 120 units this year um, and their real real sphere of influence uh, really good marketing towards their neighborhood which they pretty much own <laughs> um, you know they do some fantastic marketing every year you know santa pictures of santa they did a parade this year with golf carts you know with the pandemic so they've, they've gotten really creative so um you know we've got a lot of different types of models of teams um but the majority of them traditional kind of regular models but uh, you know i encourage all my teams to diversify their business um if they're going to start a team and and um you know not just have one complete source of of lead generation excellent and um i'll ask you alex mm -hmm. Types of teams, models, same question. Yeah, so in my experience, you know, there are teams um, that work really well in the regards, you know, how they're built. Um, what I find is that the teams that usually have a team leader, not sort of a, uh, several people who are wearing the hat of a team leader, do much better and have a longer longevity than some of these other teams that we've seen start up over the years of where, you know, maybe two, three, I've seen as many as five quote unquote partners that have started a team. Um, so there are different types of teams, but the ones where, you know, you have the rainmaker at the top tend to be the ones that work uh, best and also the ones that, um, you know, have the longer longevity uh, compared to some of these other ones. 
Um, but from a broker perspective, you know, it's really difficult at times to tell, you know, two, three agents who are thinking about joining up a team that this may not be a great idea. So this is, it's one of those things, there are lots of types of teams and you can get your agents to go in the right direction. But it, it's, you know, this is one of those, as a broker, it, it's a hard conversation to have with people that's, that's, you know what, you need to go in this direction versus the direction that many of them sometimes want to go in. Yeah, I agree. It, it actually becomes um, almost the exit strategy for a team leader to, uh, if they hear the feedback, and, and sometimes it's good feedback, right? I mean, these are brokers who care about their agents, but at the same time, uh, I was had a top, you know, business. I was a top producer, and I had, um, I knew what I wanted to do, and it was if the broker was saying something different, we almost suddenly you know that starts that rub where we're just not on the same page and i think so so brokers don't like having the conversation because they don't feel equipped and don't have the confidence to have the conversation which is why we're all here today actually um so yeah. so that you can learn from those situations um i think uh i'm gonna go to the next question which is really about what was the catalyst like we just sort of started talking about the catalyst of recognizing the need to provide team solutions. And was it because we lost agents? Was it because um, we just were forced, you know, ahead in our thinking as a brokerage? Maybe that's where it came from, from your experiences. Um, maybe it was uh, brought about from, you know, just the sort of the emergence of teams. Um, I'll start with, uh, first I'll ask, um, Alex, why don't you, you kind of started yeah. talking about, this. I'll start with you. You know, the brokers don't want to have that conversation. The agents don't like what they're hearing. So how do teams, yeah. in your experience, how did this come about for brokerages to sort of adapt a team solution? So I guess before I answer that question, I really want to talk to you about, um, so about two weeks ago, uh, the Residential Real Estate Council had our celebration conference. And we introduced uh, broker solutions to the attendees there um, to talk a little bit about what we could do for independent brokers. And somebody approached me afterwards um, and she said, Alex, this is exactly what I need. I don't know what to do. I have a brokerage of 75 agents. Um, I love all my agents, but I have one agent that decided to start a team and he's now recruited 45 of my agents to be on his team. So all of a sudden he has started his own brokerage within her brokerage. And it is because she had no structure set up, no policies, no rules, none of that, none of that was set up. And so, and this has been my experience is that when teams first started, when I started my team in a brokerage, um, the broker had no policies. They didn't know what to do about it. And they sort of swept it under the rug for a long time. And everybody had their own special deal with the broker and then eventually we found out you know as all the teams started talking everybody had a different deal um, everybody was working differently it ended up being that most of the teams within 12 months all but one team left the brokerage and there were 15 teams at that point because they just didn't feel supported the brokerage didn't have anything set up for them so i think it's really important to be on the forefront of it to set up uh some sort of rules and procedures and policies around teams versus backpedaling backwards, because that's where your failures are gonna be. Just like the, the broker who, you know, more than half of her company is now part of this team, and she has no idea what to do because it's already, you know, the horse is out, you know, right. and you know, it, it's a struggle. It is, and I, you know, I think the, um, the, the better offense, right? The better defense is a better offense, and to have a plan in place to avoid that, or be able to change faster than what's happening. And I think that's where we sort of see uh, the mistakes. We don't make the changes fast enough, and they're made for us. And then, unfortunately, you know, either lose agents or um, they get recruited. Um, it's really, it's really interesting. So, um, Jeff, your comments on that. So I think uh, Alex brought up a good point with with backpedaling and, and trying to be proactively see it. Um, you know, one of the things I think the keys as a district director, broker, manager, whatever your position is, is to I, I think you know at the beginning several years ago 
I tend to see team leads as, okay, I don't really need to stay on top of them. The team leader will handle everything. Um, those people are supported by their team leader and there's nothing I really need to do. And, and, and that thinking changed because um, if I'm not involved, then they only, the team members are only loyal to their their team lead and, and then the team lead feels like they're not supported by me. So um, I try to do a very good job of you know, letting the team members know, have, you know, being on their on their monthly calls. I can't always do weekly, but you know, on their monthly calls, making a presence, uh, doing some individual classes for those teams, and letting the team lead know that, hey, I'm here for you. I'm I'm here as a resource. Um, team leads are are usually very very good agents. Um, I try to, I kind of have a cutoff of, of where I really try to influence people not to start a team because I, I think one of the one of the obstacles we find is a lot of people want to start teams and maybe they're only doing 20 or 30 units a year and that's just not enough to really support a team. Um, but if they're really ready, then I let them know, hey, I'm here to support you and even though you're a great team lead and you've got lots of knowledge, you, you know, most of them, they're not, they haven't seen uh, the day to day that I do with, you know, not only contract stuff, but, you know, what can go wrong. Um, so I really try to help the, the, the new teams form uh, their structure because a lot of team leads make mistakes with that too. And, and not, in my opinion, not charging enough and they go broke and then they have to rechange their structure. Um, but it's really yeah. just about getting involved with the team leader as well as the team members and letting them know that I'm here too. It's not just always on your team lead. Yeah, and, and I think what you said too is the hands-off approach was very common. Uh, they're on a team, they do their own thing, let them do what they do, and the whole team's a flight risk, potentially. Uh, I've seen it, you know, where uh, the team all told their team leader they wanted to go to another company, you know, and the yeah. team leader was helped by their own team. So I think you have to... Um, I'm glad you brought that up because not supporting these people is you're not adding any value, you know, and part of that value, the entire value proposition for an agent to stay connected to their brokers, to see the value they get from the company. And, and we can't just look at top agents and say, Hey, you're great. You know, it's great to watch you. That, that just admits we're not adding any value. Sasha, I'm, I'm purposefully having you answer this sort of last because in your experience and you, we're vice president of another company, get a team there, the solutions couldn't be made. And so in a sad way, I mean, you, you forged your own company out of this, of course, as we've heard, and I know a lot of team leaders around the country, you know, doing 3 million plus in, in GCI and they're, they're, they're grateful that they started their own brokerage. Some of them said, I didn't want to start a brokerage, um, but that was the best solution for them. So when you see, you know, some of the mistakes that the companies are making or recognizing the need, I'm going to go to the next slide just because it says really the, the biggest challenges of helping people that want to start a team. So what would you suggest, Sasha, I'll start with you, to help those brokers and managers who are afraid to have that conversation? Um, how would you suggest starting the conversation with agents who come to them that say, I want to start a team? Sasha, what should we do? You know, what would a, a broker out there listening what should they do? Yeah, so, I mean, this is like, you could talk about this one question for hours. Um, and, you know, I think I would start with the premise of like, this isn't gonna be popular with the brokers out there because I think teams are kind of feel burdensome because it means you have to recreate the wheel a little bit. So I think brokers like kind of wish that we wouldn't have to deal with a lot of teams. But at the end of the day, it is my belief that like teams are sort of the way of the future. I think it's going to become harder and harder to be, you know, competitive out in the world as a solo agent doing all the things at the pace that people expect all of these things to be done. And so I think it's going to become very difficult to stay relevant um, without a, a fair amount of people becoming teams in some capacity. So I think the truth is, is like, the first thing you have to discuss is like, what is your goal? Is your goal to have a uh, retirement plan? Is your goal to be able to do less work in five years? Is your goal just to have some coverage over weekends so that you have someone else to keep an eye on your files that will have your back so that you have theirs? Is your goal to have your name in headlights? Like, what is your goal? Because every person who's growing a team is doing it for a different reason. Most of those people at the end of the day are going towards higher income or better quality of life. And I think it's really important to know that first. And I think it is important to coach them 
with honesty, because I will tell you, you know, everybody will tell you whether in real estate or not, it's never smart to be part of a 50 50 business, right? Because there's no majority vote. And I will feel the same way about people that come and it's, you know, two women that have both been doing real estate for 15 years and they're super busy and they just want someone else to cover for them on vacations. And they say, hey, let's get an assistant and let's form a team. And it's going to be 50 50 and like we'll both do some work well i have never really seen that work because somebody inevitably always works harder someone's ready to retire sooner someone decides like they're going to take more vacations than the other so i don't think that's a great plan and i think there is some candid honesty that needs to be had with these team leaders to make sure they've got the right track and you know that they're not jumping right into holes um that will lead them astray. And so I, I feel like that's the number one conversation. The number or the number one is like, what are your goals? Like, what are you trying to do this for? And then the number two conversation is like, are you a right fit for our culture to the point at which we would like to make these, you know, manipulations to our current structure? And I would say, you know, even if that one agent maybe isn't, and it seems like a pain and it seems like they're literally a flight risk and you're constantly dealing with their liability all the time, okay, well, maybe you don't enact it that day or you don't fall over yourself to do it as soon as possible. But like, you've got to know that the next agent is just a month or six months or a year away from having the same problem. So for us, we had to just start looking at like, do we want to retain them? And what are we willing to tweak about our accounting, about our systems, about our marketing, about our physical office space to retain them if so? And I mean, it's a top to bottom conversation. And I mean, it took, you know, I loved my company. I was very loyal to them. As you said, I had no desire to start a company. I did not want to have an escrow account. I was super overwhelmed by that. I did not want to manage people. I loved have, having a broker that would like look through my contracts and make sure that my T's were crossed and my I's were dotted. So I had no interest in leaving, but ultimately it was just like their structure around teams couldn't quite keep up with what our team was doing and to be fair they were relatively new in our little like our town is a little behind the time so they were really blowing up in bigger cities and we had really no teams to speak of so i think you have a better chance now of being like you can be on the leading edge of it if you want to it's not like it, this is coming as a surprise to anybody anymore so um lots of conversations but really it's just deciding what are they trying to do and do you agree that what they're trying to do will be accomplished by this format and then being honest about it uh, you know unfortunately you're not going to stay friends with everybody and that's okay no and and the i mean i have to comment on everything you said is fabulous but i want to comment on one particular piece of that which is you know, joining together to partner at 50-50, where one is doing 4 million, the other is doing 4 million, and together we do eight, is not growth. You know, two people coming together that each do 4 million, that do 25 million, makes sense. You know, you, so I think, you know, the, 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 the mistake that, and we see this, derailment, it derails the agents, that putting them together is quick, they, they make the decision too quickly, and then separating that, after you just said one sells more than the other one works harder than the other one pays more expenses than the other and you know they're just not it, it i love buyers and you love selling it doesn't work you know and it, and uh, that model is one that is unfortunately many many agents make the mistake and then spend lots of money and time trying to undo it after they've Separating done it, it. and then Separating they lose the yeah right. they lose friendships over it and everything else um so so having that conversation even if it's a hard one brokers and managers out there to say what are you really trying to accomplish i love what you just said sasha it's perfect um so i'm going to ask too because we've got which is so many great questions um anything else from jeff and alex to add to those who want to start a team do you have some sort of process you take yeah. people through questionnaire sure. or something like that they want to do Sasha asked the right question that I wish somebody would have asked me when I first started my team. Like, what are your goals? What are you trying to do? Because when I started my team 15 years ago, I had no right to start a team at that point. I didn't do enough business. All I, I, I thought, oh, I just get a team member and I make more money and that's it. Well, you know, there are other ways for me to make more money. So I think that the first question of like, what are your goals uh, when someone approaches you about that is very, very important. And I, I completely agree. And Sasha hit the hit the nail on the head. Um, you know, when I have a conversation with people that want to start teams, number one is your production big enough, and and what are your goals? Um, and I 
completely agree with the partnership because over seven years of being a broker manager, 99% of them just absolutely fell. And I think a lot of that is just like Sasha mentioned, you know, one person's doing, you know, 12 transactions, the other one's doing 30, and then, you know, they're splitting it, that's never going to work. They And then once they make that mistake, they branded themselves towards, you know, that partnership, and then they've got to take all that back. And so it's just a very hard, com you know, it's a very messy breakup, and it's sad to see sometimes. Um, but with new agents or new agents that want to start teams, you know, my question is, what are your goals? Um, I find that a lot of them, they're really just looking, they need an assistant, they need a transaction coordinator, they need that because it's really just their time aspect. Um, and they don't necessarily have a business yet that they can really pass off leads to or support. And that's the thing, when, when you bring on a team member, you're bringing on that responsibility of helping that team member because every team member, once they get brought on, they're going to expect leads, they're going to expect support. So if you can't provide those things and you don't have your systems or processes in place, you're not going to add value and you're going to have a constant cycle of, of agents leaving you. And I've seen that over and over. And so my best teams have all the pieces in place. They've got a transaction coordinator, they've got an assistant, they've got you know, showing agents, they've got everything in place, they've got all their marketing down. That way, when they plug somebody in, they just go and they're on autopilot, you know, with, with uh, you know, getting their agents to have success under their program. Yeah, and it's nothing worse than adding people and not having a system in place. And that's, you're right, that is a huge mistake by many, many teams. Um, great answers, everybody. Um, our next two questions kind of, um, I think, go together. and We've answered a lot of them. So I'm gonna go from biggest challenges as well as internal changes to your system. We sort of hit on this with Sasha's comment that, you know, how do I, do I adapt? If I don't, what are the risks and benefits of not adapting? Um, what's the opportunity cost? What is the cost benefit analysis of if I lose a top team? I mean, when you look at um, growing teams and companies that support growing teams, what they always say to me and what they what they believe is that it's a lot easier to recruit when they have a huge team on their in their in their roster, right? They have they have this winning team with lots of signs. They support those people. Yes, they're making a bigger piece of the pie. It's okay. Right? It's actually a decision that is made purposefully and on purpose, like intentionally, so that um, other sign calls come in from those signs. Uh, other recruiting opportunities come from having the market presence of those of those yard signs. I, I know that internally. It can be, you know, uh, accounting systems that don't work for teams. This is always a struggle for agents uh, and team leaders. You know, where did your company uh, find that they could make these kind of swift changes? Both, I mean, all of it: training, education, uh, between your new agent onboarding to accounting systems and infrastructure like your websites and things like that. Do you feel like? Um, you know, either from your experience as a, a team leader or as a regional, I'll start with you, Jeff, on this one. Like, did your company change? You know, a lot of a lot of companies had to change their incentive programs. You know, how do we rank people now, and how do we give awards out? Which is our next slide. But talk to us about the internal challenges or, or systems that you changed that you were able to change pretty quickly to adapt to supporting teams. Yeah, so we had to, we, we have a cap system in, in my company, and I won't get into uh, much of that, but we have a cap system. So what we were finding was a lot of P agents were trying to partner up to basically just meet their cap and, you know, uh, not pay the brokerage, um, you know, for, for what we were providing. So, you know, we had to have a minimum amount that the team lead would take from their team members, so we would avoid people just partnering up just to cap and and get get past the fees um as far as we you know we have an entire accounting group and agent services team that when we bring people on um you know if they're part of a team we need to see the team member agreement um that way we know exactly what splits that's mostly for disputes or anything if, if a team member you know says well they promised me you know 70% of this transaction and now they're saying 50-50, you know, we've got to have something, we always just go back to what's in the team agreement, what's in, 
what's on paper, and that's how we have to to rule on the matter. Um, but you know, we did have to in our internal systems, we did have to um, upload those and. Um, you know, change our systems to where it automatically populates on their uh, CDAs. You know, to get to get paid, um, and we've got a system where the team lead can share it with the team members so they can see all the transactions. I've got, you know, I've got several different mixes. Some some team leads they have everything go in their name. Uh, even in our back-end systems. Um, I've got others that really don't care and, and you know, it can go in different people's name on the back-end, um, but they're still part of the team and they still get paid. So, um, you know, there's kind of a variety, but, um, you know, we had to, we definitely had to put systems in place to avoid people just trying to partner up and avoid caps. And it's definitely a struggle and an obstacle. And that's why we like to retain our teams and keep them because you know too much of that it's just then we get into just having to change the process every 30 days right. and that's not much right. yeah excellent alex so what i find is um technology in real estate is really antiquated you know they may it may have a new interface to it but a lot of the technology that's out there from some of the major broker um software that's out there um is really really antiquated uh, but all of it can work as long as you're willing to put some time into it to make it work for teams. Um, and so I think, you know, the most important part that you can do is, you know, have a document that not only the team leader, once they form a team, but then every team member signs that outlines every dispute, every how the how the relationship is going to go, who pays for what. Um, how are they going to be advertised? So I, I have a document that my brokerage provided me when I joined them that pretty much had the outline of here's, at, here's all the terms and conditions of our relationship. And I know that it has taken them time um, and, uh, on their back end to try to make it work. Um, and I know we still, uh, we still have challenges. You know, we recently had a transaction where four people had to get paid on a team. Um, they, I mean, it almost like does not compute. The system just was having a really hard time making it work, but it took some time. They figured it out and we're going to have another one of those scenarios coming up soon. So I think as long as you don't put up all those challenges, you can figure out a way with your vendors to make the infrastructure work. But I think the most important part is on the forefront, having a document that outlines the relationship um, and governs the relationship between the brokerage, the team leader and the agents. And as long as that document's in place, and also keep in mind that document is a living document. Every year there are revisions that come out uh, based on various situations that have occurred the year prior to that. Um, but that's the most important part is having that agreement, that governing document uh, signed by all parties. The systems, you'll just make it work. It'll be painful for a short period of time, but they always work themselves out on the back end. Yeah, I think having a proactive solution that keeps you know it, it might be like you said it might be a headache on the front end it's completely worth doing and um, I think so often sometimes in our tech teams and we get kind of that tech answer which is like no it can't be done and we're like we're salespeople and brokers are salespeople and we want we want the answer that says yes we'll figure out a way to do it so I think it's important like you just said like we get we get told no you know by accounting or we get told it doesn't work and we have to say well we have to figure out a way to make it work because mm -hmm. um because it's our, our most valuable asset these agents uh we're all counting on it um anything to add to this sasha about um systems and infrastructure and and teams yeah well we had to make a ton of changes i think you know when my team was kind of coming into creation it seemed like a headache because it was like oh is this just this one-off thing that we're creating this super special thing for this super person that thinks she's super special but now it's like it's time you know any amount of minutes or hours or weeks you put into this will pay off you know dividends for your company in the long run and i would say the same as alex it was a live working document 
don't don't like feel like it has to be perfect from out of the gate like have some sections cover some things cover the things that have come up as problems so far and just like with your contract to closing process every time something falls through the cracks every time something goes wrong add a new section to address it so you don't have to have like the entire manual written from day one i will say i went to a couple you know like sounds like the rrc materials are trying to help with this i went to like my virginia association of realtors conference and there was a, a group of team leaders that are excuse me brokerage owners that had teams developing that came together and we all shared our paperwork like there are you don't have to recreate the wheel you don't have to write all this from scratch you basically just have to take some templates and cater it to the type of teams that you all have but we had to redo splits we had to redo caps we had to come up with policies about if i did recruit another agent from inside my own firm their cap was going to be different and their contribution to the company was going to be higher than it would have been if i had brought someone in off the street you know we had to redo the way we made commission payments we had to kind of rewrite a whole section of our operations manual we had to you know we had to teach them how to create LLCs and get liability insurance and create umbrellas because it's not all fun and games like they're taking on some liability if they're going to be this middleman between these people that sometimes the broker doesn't get to know as well. So, you know, there were a lot of things that had to happen and I would say just bite off a piece of a time at a time like every week focus on the next section and try to cover the next problem that you see coming and in a year you'll have a really nice manual. So, um, it's a lot of work. Yeah, that's that's a really well laid out plan. Someone just asked a question to this point. Uh, can you give us examples of good company policy for team development? I'll throw that out to uh, all of you to contemplate. So one of the things that I'll actually uh, throw in what RRC to our broker solutions is offering is we are offering consulting when it comes to HR. So in helping you retain, recruit, so uh, one of the services that I encourage people to take a look at, if they are trying to figure out how they deal with this, we have the consultants on, on, on staff that can help you through this process. So um, one of the important parts, and Sasha brought this up, um, is you know every state is different, every brokerage is different, but you have to make sure that you're in compliance. Um, and so that's where, where it all starts. And then from there, the policies and procedures grow from, from that standpoint. And I think people just want uh, transparency too, you know, like tell us what the parameters are and help us and support us. And, you know, if you have a philosophy of, you know, the answer is yes, now what's the question within reason, right? I mean, we're here to support these people. And I feel like that the companies and the, the brokers and CEOs and team leaders and managers I've interviewed or talked to or consult with myself, those that have adopted this are we're talking about what are the benefits, like the real benefits to the teams are, you know, an incredible amount of culture, right? Um, we get more business from more signs. We get more, uh, you know, it, it's a lot easier to recruit to a winning team that's out there uh, that is, you know, you say, oh, wow, that team is with this company. And yeah. You know, we're, we're the biggest sports team. We're the whoever favorite team you love. You know, that's our, that, that culture comes through and the momentum that builds from having teams um, is really, really fantastic. I think, again, it just comes down to like having conversations with people and not being afraid and having a conversation where you don't feel like, you know, you're on your heels. I think a lot of managers and brokers feel like they're up against the wall. They don't have a good answer and they just kind of avoid the conversation. Hopefully it'll go away, right? Well, by then it's too late. Um, so I'm going to ask you, how did you incorporate um, incentives and awards? Did you change those? Did you create uh, awards for groups, teams? Was there a cutoff? Did you, do you have a separate event for that? How do you incorporate all of your team models into your rallies and awards programs that you might be putting on? Uh, Jeff, go ahead. Yeah, so um, uh, with my organization, we have three different categories. So uh, individual being one. So a uh, single agent that, you know, they can have an assistant or a transaction coordinator, but, you know, they're the license, they're the only licensed person. And then we have a spouse team, uh, which is, you know, two spouses, both licensed, you know, doing transactions, uh, primarily um, 
you know, the transactions, you know, one spouse does more of it. The other one is kind of in the background doing other things. Um, and then we've got a true, true team, which means, you know, non-household, they've actually hired a buyer's agent. It's not really, a, you know, it's not just calling, branding themselves as a team, but they actually have a buyer's agent they're responsible for. And that's when they can, they're considered to be a team. So they compete in the individual category, the spouse category, and the team category. Um, so that that's how we've we've done it. Excellent. And uh, Alex, how about so we'll share, share you one of the things is that that my agreement with my brokerage uh, outlines how this is handled. You know how what sort of awards categories, and my agents know that you know the broker is not giving out awards to my team members. That's something that I'm responsible for as a team lead. So that's outlined as to what sort of award I'm going to get. Um, and how my agents are going to be rewarded as well. Um, so all that is in that document, which is so important to be really upfront about it. Um, I was with the brokerage uh, for a very long time when teams first started happening, and you'd see, you know, they didn't, they just gave awards. You know, there wasn't your number one, and you know, I was number one for for several years. And you always heard the whispers in the room. Well, that's not really all him doing that work. It's all the other people. And so the ind independent agents had a little bit of an attitude towards the brokerage, but also towards me because they felt uh, that it wasn't fair. Um, so I think you need to have some sort of a program set up. Um, once again, it's all about communication, having something in writing, um, making sure everybody understands what it is, um, and just you know going down that list and following through on it. Yeah, there's no there's no surprises really, and and that's. Just communication, you said it. Uh, Sasha, sorry, I'd, like, I'd like to add one oh. thing to that. Um, yes. Is that just, <clears throat> sorry, thought about it. And But this goes back to what we were talking about with just the team agreement that you have in place. You know, have those discussions with your team leads. You know, what do you want as, as a team lead is in your agreement? Are they going to get individual recognition? Are they, is everything, you know, we personally count everything under the team for awards, but, you know, I do top producer lists every single year and I do these signs that say a top agent lives here that I put out and everybody's sign. So, you know, as long as the team members are okay with that, that every, and I've got a few teams that they want everything under their name. They don't want any of their team members. And then they say, hey, I'm responsible for, you know, taking them to dinner or giving them bonuses or extra awards. And those team members are okay with that. But where you get into a problem is when the team member, when you don't have that in place and the team members think they should get credit and then they start having resentment towards, you know, I did 10 out of the 25 transactions on the team this month and I'm not getting individual credit. So I usually want to know what do you want and are your team members okay with that structure? Yeah, and then not just turn a blind eye, continue to watch it and make sure that uh, you're protecting the team leader really with that as well. Sasha, anything to add? Not much. We don't, we didn't do a lot of um, awards, but I would say the only thing I would add is what Alex said, like you got to break it out because you will create hostility with, you know, if the, a team is taking one of the top three spots every time, there's only like one agent that solo gets, you know, recognized each month or year or whatever. Um, it just creates hostility. You don't want, you want to make it feel like they are not trying to compete at any, and they're not losing any acknowledgement as a result of the teams being there. Yeah, I mean, it, it is, uh, you know, disheartening. You go up, you, you have an, an individual agent who does eight units a month and uh, they feel great until they see that, you know, the team did 18 and now they, they somehow think their eight was, is not great enough, you know, and it is. And, and I, I had that experience myself. <laughs> um, so good stuff, really good stuff. You know, I, I think we covered a lot of this, but just to kind of talk about, like, if you're out there, you're a broker owner, you're a senior leader of a company, you might manage an office, um, you know, the biggest threats really to a not adopting a team concept, and we've covered some of this a little bit throughout the, the talk today, um, you know, the biggest threat is, is uh, you know, retention. Right. So, so what else can you add to this uh, from your thoughts about like not doing this? Like, you know, best advice rather that you would give to broker owners listening or sales managers that have this challenge. Like, what's your best advice for them to lean into this conversation and go at it, you know, directly instead of 
instead of defensively. Alex, go ahead. So I think you you said it very well, Sherry, being on the offensive versus on the defensive. You have to be on the forefront of this because if it hasn't already landed on your doorstep and, and by land on, on, on your doorstep, an agent shows up in your doorway and says, I think I'm going to start a team. If it hasn't happened already, it will happen very soon. And if you are not on the forefront of it, um, then you're, it's just going to be a loss for you. You're going to have an issue with retention. Um, so as part of broker solutions, one of the things that we can, we can help you with is creating that, you know, I'd almost call it a retention plan that we're going to help you figure out how to retain your, um, you know, your, your agents who are trying to start a team. Uh, but more importantly, also then how do you train the individual team members? How do you train the individual team leaders? There's more training to be had. And so being on the offensive and having that set up is the best thing that you could do for your for your brokerage. Excellent, excellent. Uh, Jeff or Sasha? Oh, I would just say my feeling, I think I feel strongly, more strongly about this than a lot of people, but I think it's like extinction. Like, <laughs> like I do not think, I, I really believe that the number of just solo freestanding, I do everything myself agents, in five years is going to be drastically drastically lower than it is now if not like almost obsolete now i again i have a strong opinion about that but what you know what i'll say is like a lot of these teams if they're run right and they're given the right resources and they're taught how to do this they provide better service they have you know more checklists they have more systems they have you know their t's are crossed their i's are dotted less things are falling through their cracks because they've got like a little mini expert trying to do each thing instead of one person trying to wear all hats. So I think like I, you look at them at first as a liability because it's like it's the Wild West. But if you can rope them in from not being a liability and give them really good resources, I honestly think they will strengthen your brand, your company and your reputation. So I really, truly believe we're going to have in five or 10 years, which I know kind of segues into the next question. I think it's just going to be impossible for brokerages to compete if they do not have a very well-founded like team plan of how to, you know, how to adapt to this. Yeah. And, and to be honest, you know, I mean, it is a better customer experience. If you think, I mean, this is a proof positive, the, the agents uh, who have team transaction coordinators, things that are not falling through the cracks, the client experience is better. And um, yeah, I, I agree with you, Sasha, a lot. I, I definitely agree with you. Anything to add to that? Me? Yeah. Yeah, so I, I really agree with Sasha. I think if, if you're not, if you haven't already embraced it, you need to embrace it because teams are the future. Um, when you look at just, you know, national sets, I mean, the old saying of, you know, 20% of us do 80% of the business, that's, that's true. So you know, those team leads, what, what ends up happening for a lot of my regular agents that really struggle, they're really good. They could possibly be really fantastic salespeople. They're not very good at marketing and they're not very good at organization, which that's why they need a team structure. So a lot of them that come in, especially, you know, after they go through a mentor program or get some first training, they need that additional level and that additional layer of support, which a team can provide. So if you're not embracing teams, you're going to lose a lot of those people that will join teams at other brokerages because they're looking for that additional structure and additional accountability because so many agents are just kind of out there very, very lost, um, especially, you know, those agents that are doing, you know, I call them rising stars, but, you know, six to 20 transactions and then they need to get to the next level. How do they do that? And sometimes they just don't have the experience or the uh, organization themselves or the marketing ability to be able to do that. So they're looking for value somewhere. And if you don't embrace the teams, you're going to you're going to lose a lot of agents. And, you know, those team leads do recruit for you. So, I mean, I would say probably 20 percent, 25 percent of the agents I bring on recruiting are part of teams where the team leaders are then some, you know, fantastic recruiting sources for me. That's excellent. Alex, any thoughts? Yeah, I'm, I mean, the reality is that the, the future is teams, uh, more or less, and brokers need to, need to figure out a way to embrace it. 
Um, you know, I sort of look at what's happened with the mortgage industry where, you know, loan officers are licensed and they're salary W-2 employees. Um, you know, there are lawsuits happening all across the country um, that are threatening our independent contractor status for our team leaders and for uh, our agents. And I think it's just really important that um, you start exploring the structure of teams for your brokerage. Because what if worst case scenario happens and all of a sudden your agents have to be uh, W-2 employees? Some of your top producing agents are going to help your brokerage because they will be able to take on the payroll um, that maybe you as a broker at this point are not able to. So, um, you know, I, I wouldn't look at, as a, at this as a threat, which I know a lot of brokers just auto automatically, especially the ones that have been around for a very long time, they look at teams as a threat. Um, and that's not the way to, to look at it. Um, you have to look at it as, as an opportunity. And so you have to get your, your ducks in a row if you don't already, um, get your system set up um, and get to work on that and start talking about it. Absolutely. And you know, it, it is a huge opportunity actually, uh, looking at attracting teams. You know, if you're out there as a regional or a sales manager, a broker owner, just imagine if you were attracting teams to come to your company. That is a huge opportunity right now. And having the back end support, having all of the different ways that you can support teams from you know, saying, how can I help you? That's like the biggest question, the easiest question to ask the team leaders. How can I support you? What do you need from us to grow your business? Right there, right? And and that attention. I remember working with a guy, he um had a team and I, you know, he was so independent. And within within 20 minutes, you know, I saved him 20% of his expenses because I just said, you know, we have all of this stuff and you're spending money. It's like, where did you come from? And I'm like, well, that's what my job is. Like I add value to, I, yeah, I'm not gonna teach you how to sell houses. You're a rock star with that. But what I can do is help you on the ROI side. I can help you here. I can show you that some of the things you have are duplicate and you're spending money where you don't have to. So we can add value in many different ways um, if we just look at it that way. And I also think we can be tapping into how do we recruit these teams? How do we attract these teams to our company and forge ahead so that we are offering multiple models? Because Sasha, you might be totally right. I mean, the more and more teams are emerging and people are seeing that as a, I have people who say, I want to be on a team more than I want to be a single agent because of the structure of the team, you know? So agents that are joining the business like the model because they can just do what they do. Come in and, and sell houses and, and show property and list property and, and, uh, and get paid and they don't have to provide all that extra support. So there are benefits for people to join a team. There are many, many benefits for all of you out there today on this broker webinar listening to embrace teams, number one, make the necessary changes don't be afraid of it lean into it take the advice of these experts today and also realize that the real benefits right are a winning team that you can attract other agents to and all that happens more really is more signage more market share and more opportunities for everybody so this has been a really really a fantastic uh, conversation today I want to thank you all because you have given such great advice and given such great expertise. Um, I also want to thank, uh, again, Broker Solutions from uh, Residential Real Estate Council. Alex, thank you for sponsoring today's event. And I know um, that you are providing a special free giveaway to those listening today. So tell us about that. Yeah. So we talked a lot about, you know, how teams work and all the great things about teams. Um, well, we have uh, HR consulting that's available. So we have consul consultants that can help you with recruitment, retention, um, training, and how to get all of your agreements put together. So as part of our, uh, I wouldn't call it a free giveaway, but it's a giveaway today. Um, we're offering uh, $50 off the first hour of HR consulting services. Um, I know that's a really long URL there, but if you go to crs.com and look for Broker Solutions, um, you'll be able to find this website, learn more about Broker Solutions, what they can do for, uh, for training, to helping you with HR, consulting services, and many other great resources for independent brokers. So I'd encourage you to stop by crs.com uh, to find more information about Broker Solutions.
and also this link will be included in the follow-up email that you received from RIS Media today. This link will be in there for easier uh, access and you can also go to their website, of course. Um, so thank you for the offer. This is a great offer that really everyone should take advantage of. Also, uh, Sherry Johnson Coaching, uh, we are giving away a free 30-day trial of the Sherry Johnson Playbook and this playbook offers online access to over 20 courses of content and how-to videos that are short and succinct. Also a live uh, one hour Q&A coaching session once a month with me. Uh, and it's after the first 30 days, it's only $99 a month. It's a great way to uh, give your agent some value. 30 days free, go to sherry'sfreeplaybook.com and uh, you, can, you can sign up for that. Um, and again, you know, if you haven't used or seen or heard of, uh, RIS Media offers a phenomenal social media content solution for brokers. And I would encourage you, we offer this in all of our coaching uh, to our companies and coaching uh, consulting companies that we work with. It is called uh, ACE Social, and this will provide unbelievable, easy content solutions for social media marketing for your company, for your agents. Take a look at it. There's a free 14-day trial at RIS Media. I always talk about this on my webinars with them because I just think it's such a great value and it's set it and forget it. Tons of content by RIS Media and it's your agents will love it. It's a great retention tool. It's a great recruiting tool as well. And again, Sasha, Jeff, Alex, thank you for everything you brought today because it was totally your A game and you guys are all fantastic out there in the field doing this. I hope you'll join us again in the future. And it was my pleasure to host today and to actually to moderate today. And we'll see all of you back on the next RIS Media Broker webinar series. Thanks for being here. Thanks for uh, tuning in today. And we look forward to seeing you all. Have a great week. We'll see you soon. Thank you. Bye. Thank right. you. Thank Bye. you. Bye.